everyone. Uh, we are Team Four, and we consist of Ryan Aldred, Renata De Freitas, Kate Fleming, Jennifer McGilvery, Trent Tabor. Today, we're going to be talking about our paper, Amazon Product or Process. And to start us off, we have Trent, who's going to talk to us a little bit about the background. Amazon has become synonymous with online shopping for many people in North America. Whether it's on a computer or a phone, people around the world are ordering a wide range of items as I speak. One of the reasons Amazon has become the go-to site for online shopping has been their shipping strategy. Delivering goods from a wide range of suppliers all over the globe was a challenge that Amazon conquered early on and has now become one of their strengths. In this presentation, we will examine whether the supply chain is the real product that Amazon offers its millions of customers. Amazon was founded in 1994 by Jeff Bezos as an online book retailer. The company established 14 leadership principles then that they still adhere to today. Included among them are principles such as customer obsession, hire and develop the best, think big, frugality, and deliver results. The company is a retailer, distributor, and manufacturer, an unparalleled level of vertical integration, but is also still a viable space for small retailers to sell their wares. In 2005, the company introduced Amazon Prime. It's a membership-based service that guarantees delivery of items within one to two days. Amazon began their service in select metropolitan areas and gradually expanded it to encompass major markets worldwide. In 2009, they created Amazon Basics, which at first sold general merchandise like batteries and cords and now sells 3,000 different items, many of them the most popular ones on the site. They are also the largest provider of cloud infrastructure in the world and offer dash buttons to, to a consumer one press ordering system that bypasses user logins and traditional payment options. The company has also announced plans to add another five brick and mortar bookstores in North America, complementing Amazon Go, a checkout free grocery store in Seattle, Washington. The company also acquired Kiva Systems in 2012, a robot inventory management system for $775 million. They eventually renamed the company Amazon Robotics. Imagine a reality with one-click ship for seamless international trade and shipping. Global supply chain by Amazon is that world. In a 2013 report to Amazon senior managers, it detailed a plan to create a global delivery network that controls the flow of goods from factories in China and India to customers' doorsteps in Atlanta, New York, and London. This plan would locate Amazon at the center of the logistics industry. And global supply chains by Amazon's ambitions are to amass inventory, automate the entire international supply chain, and buy space on trucks, planes, and cargo freighters at reduced rates. The savings from automating logistics and purchasing discounted cargo space will then be passed on to customers, providing an additional competitive edge for Amazon. So since the 2013 report, pieces of the GSCA have slowly been falling into place. The company has gained approval from the Federal Maritime Commission to become an ocean transportation intermediary, a business that can rent out space on ocean-going freighters. In 2015, they announced they were deploying thousands of branded tractor-trailer trucks across North America to ship goods in between their fulfillment centers. Shortly afterwards, Amazon Flex was also introduced, a ride-sharing app much like Uber or Lyft that delivers packages instead of people. In 2006, they launched Prime Air by leasing 40 cargo jets from Atlas Air and ATSG. Lastly, in 2016, uh, they made their first automated drone delivery to a customer in C Cambridge. This was part of an effort to continually shrink delivery times. 
The end goal of all of these combined moves will have consumers bypassing traditional de delivery services and booking with Amazon directly. So what are the implications of all these moves? Well, their directives in the air, on the ground, and at sea have shown that they are committed to meeting and exceeding the needs of their users. By eliminating the supplier-retailer ordering system relationship, Amazon has also managed to surpass other third-party logistic companies in terms of delivery time, a distinct competitive advantage. Amazon has accomplished much of its initial success in the area because of their distribution and warehouse spread and capacity. As a manufacturer, distributor, and retailer, the company has also been able to avoid the Bullwick effect, a phenomenon whereby order variability gets progressively larger the further up the supply chain the company is. Throughout their de development, they've been able to excel when it comes to the competitive qualities important to a supply chain, price, timeliness, quality, variety, and service. I'm going to pass it over to Ryan, who's going to talk about the economic realities. The economic realities of Amazon are that they play a low margin game. In 2016, they had earnings before tax of $3.892 billion on $135.987 billion in revenue. That's just over 1%. If global supply chain by Amazon is successful, they stand to significantly cut their own shipping expenses and possibly even generate profit from shipping. Uh, similarly to what they have done with Amazon Web Services, where customers pay to use their cloud-based platform, which was originally developed to house their massive e-commerce website, and is now their most profitable, profitable offering. In recent studies on the state of the retail supply chain, the supply chain itself was identified as, the, as a driver rather than just a part. According to researchers, the view of the supply chain as a growth driver makes superior supply chain execution a competitive advantage in omni-channel retail. Customers will flock to whomever can fill their needs quickly and with more convenience. This game of convenience suggests that while Amazon gravitates from being an e-commerce retailer to the quote-unquote hub of the logistics and distribution industry, its supply chain has become a product rather than a process. A product which, according to one could, analyst, could eventually become a $400 billion business. Building a global supply chain business is not an easy task, nor is it a small investment. If GSCA were not to succeed in the long term, this could jeopardize Amazon's low margin operations. Despite the risk, Amazon has created a strong value proposition by offering to ship and sell the goods of Chinese manufacturers to American consumers at a price that is cheaper than traditional logistics solutions. They have the opportunity to earn more profit from GSCA than they do from selling products on their e-commerce platform. This illustrates Amazon's new reality, that the supply chain itself has become the true product. On behalf of Team 4, I would like to thank you for watching our presentation.